Okay. Okay, let's get back to it. Okay. So um, here are a bunch of facts about power series. Okay. And I am not gonna I'm not gonna explain these facts, but we're gonna use them. Okay. So say you have two power series, summation a sub n x to the n, summation b sub n x to the n, and both converge in negative r, r. Okay. So we're, we're talking about series centered at zero, but they could be series centered at, at some other point too. Okay. It could be, uh, could do for series x minus a to the n, summation b sub n, x minus a to the n. OK, so anyway, I'm just going to talk about this for, to make it simple. OK, so one, something funny. Um, uh, um, I guess this is, this, is no, this is no surprise, right, that um, summation a sub n x to the n plus summation b sub n x to the n equals summation a sub n b sub n plus b sub n x to the n. That's, that's my surprise. Okay. Um, the second one is a little bit hard to write down. Summation a sub n x to the n times summation b sub n x to the n equals summation, summation, a sub k, b sub n minus k, x to the n, as k goes from 0 to n, n goes from 0 to n. OK, so the first one is addition. The second one is multi multiplication. I'll explain that one in a second. Next, um, if you take the derivative of a power series, if you take the derivative of a power series from n from 0 to infinity, it actually turns out to be the sum of the derivatives. The derivative, the derivative of the infinite sum turns out to be the sum, the infinite sum of the derivatives. Okay, so <coughs> summation n a sub n x to the n minus one. This is called term-wise, term, term-wise term differentiation. The last thing that is allowed to that you're allowed to do is integrate. If you take the integral, if you take the antiderivative of the power series, it's actually the same thing as the sum of the integrals. Okay, that is, you get summation um, a sub n over n plus 1, x to the n plus 1, from n equals 0 to infinity. Okay, so this last one is called term-wise integration. Um, this one right here basically says uh, you can multiply uh, as if they were finite polynomials.
Okay. So um, let me let me give some examples that I hope will 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 clarify this. Okay. So here's some examples. Here's here's a power series summation x to the n over n factorial, n from zero to infinity. Okay. Here's a power series. Okay. If you check it, you can find the ratio test will tell you that the radius of convergence. is infinite, right? So this thing actually converges on the whole line. This is one of those guys that converges on the whole line. Um, you can, if you want, we can do it right now, right? x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. We get um, over x to the n n factorial. n goes to infinity, right? So that gives us the limit of 1 over n plus 1 absolute value of x as n goes to infinity. So that's zero. Okay. So since that's always zero, we have convergence. We always have convergence. Just like that other example. Okay. okay. So this is a this is a function that makes sense on the whole real line. Okay. And now let's take its derivative. The derivative of this function n from 0 to infinity, x to the n of the factorial. Well, the, the, the third rule says we can just take the sum of the derivatives. The sum of the derivatives, right? So um, we're going to take the sum of the derivatives, x to the n over n factorial. Well, what's the derivative, derivative of x to the n over n factorial? Now let me write it like this, right? This is um, x to the 0, x to the 0 over 0 factorial plus x to the 1 over 1 factorial plus x to the 2 over 2 factorial plus x to the 3 over 3 factorial plus 12. Right? And what this, is, what this theorem says is that you can just differ, to take the derivative of the infinite sum, you can just take the sum of the derivatives of each guy. Well, what's the derivative of this? This is this is the number one, right? So the derivative is zero, right? Here we have x. What's the derivative of x? One, right? We get one. What's the derivative of x squared over two factorial? Two x to the one over two factorial. But that's the same thing as x over 1 factorial, right? What about x cubed when you differentiate it? What do you get? Well, you're going to get 3x squared over 3 factorial, which is x squared over 2 factorial, right? What do you see happens? You're going to end up with summation n from, you're going to get um, n x to the n minus 1 over n factorial from 1 to infinity, right? That's to say x to the n minus 1 over n minus 1 factorial from n equals 1 to infinity. That's the same thing as x to the n over n factorial from 0 to infinity. OK. I hope you see, uh, even if you don't see this like this, I hope you can see it right here. Right? When you differentiate this guy, what do you get? You get the same guy. Right? You get exactly the same guy. Right? This is this first first number is one, right? One 
1 plus x over 1 factorial plus x over 2 factorial plus x over 3 factorial. You differentiate it, and you get 1 plus x over 1 factorial plus x squared over 2 factorial plus etc. Right? So this is, whatever this guy is, it's something whose derivative is itself. What's, what function do you know that its derivative is itself? What function? E to the x. E to the x. Yeah, in fact, this function is e to the x. In fact, this function is e to the x. Um, let me do another example. Okay. Uh, summation x to the n over n as n goes from 1 to infinity. Okay. And this makes sense in negative 1, 1. What happens if we differentiate it? If we differentiate this thing, x to the n over n, as n goes from 1 to infinity, what do you get? What do you get? You're going to get the sum of the derivatives of these guys, right? What's the sum of the derivatives of these guys? Get the sum n equals 1 to infinity of the derivative of x to the n over n. I'll let you, I'll let you figure it out. Take, take 30 seconds or one minute. Write, write, write this down and see if you can make some statement about it. No, I, it shouldn't, I'm not going to give you that time. Tell me what it is. What's the derivative of x to the n, to the n, x to the n over n? You're shaking your head, what? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> x to the n, right? What's the, what's the derivative of x to the n? Thank you, thank you. And x to the n minus 1. Right? Oh my god. Okay, and so you end up with summation x to the n minus 1. From n equals one to infinity, I can also write that as summation n from zero to infinity x to the n. Right, that's the same thing. If I go from one to infinity x to the n minus one, it's the same thing as going from zero to infinity x to the n. Right. Okay. Summation, summation, but you recognize this, right? This is the This is the something something series, <laughs> right? The mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm series, right? The geometric series, right? The geometric series. Okay, right. So this is the ge geometric series, and here we know this is the same thing as one over one minus x. derivative of this guy is 1 over 1 minus x, right? We get that the derivative of our guy is 1 over 1 minus x. Okay. What does that tell us? That tells us that's the same thing as saying that our, our guy our series is actually the antiderivative of 1 over 1 minus x. Right? I just said the same thing. The derivative of this guy is 1 over 1 <coughs> minus x, so our guy is the antiderivative of 1 over 1 minus x. Right? 
But you know the, the antiderivative of 1 over 1 minus x. What is it? What's the antiderivative of 1 over 1 minus x? <laughs> so as a professor, I should normally keep my face really blank. Like, hmm, very interesting answer. So I, I guess I, I, I messed up. I should not have gone like this. Thank you. Natural, negative natural log. Ne negative natural log of the absolute value of what makes sense. Plus Um, and you, you can see that uh, C is 0. C is 0 uh, because um, at x equals 0, the left side is 0, and we get C is 0. Right? So we see that C is 0. OK, so what does that tell us? That tells us that this, this guy is actually negative natural log uh, 1 minus x plus c. Negative natural log 1 minus x. I guess I don't have to worry about, um, this is only between negative 1 and 1, so I can take off the absolute value signs, because I'm never going to get a negative number. So I hope you're starting to see how things are starting to come together, right? We have our series. We can do differentiation. We can do integration on them now, OK? And we're starting to see that these series are actually functions that we know. OK. Um, couple more examples. At least one more example, hopefully. Uh, okay, so I'll try to do two two quick examples. One over one minus minus x, right? That's to say one over one plus x, right? One over one minus minus x is the same thing as the geometric series of negative one x to the n. And from on negative one. Right. Geometric geometric series, right? The ratio is a geometric series, you know, one one over one minus R is summation R to the N. Right. R here the r is negative x. OK? OK. So what does that tell us? That tell, we're going to integrate both sides. Natural log of uh, 1 plus x plus some constant equals the, anti, the integrals of these signs. Right? Then what do you get? Um, uh, you can take the integrals of these guys, right? Negative 1 to the n, x to the n dx, and from 0 to infinity. Right? And what do you get? You get summation n from 0 to infinity of um, negative 1 to the n, x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. So natural log of 1 plus x plus some constant equals this. Thing. Okay. And again, you can you can you can. It's easy to see that c, this c is zero. 
by the same same trick. You evaluate at x equals zero. Right? At x equals zero, you get c equals zero. Okay, so we get this formula: natural log of one plus x actually equals summation negative one um, to the n x to the n plus one over n plus one from n equals zero to infinity. Okay. In particular, natural log of one plus one that's to say the natural log of two is summation negative one to the n over n plus one and from zero to infinity. Right? That's uh, one minus a half plus a third minus a fourth plus a fifth minus a sixth, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Which is that funny thing that we did, we mentioned at the very beginning. One last, one last example, basically along the same lines. One over one minus minus x squared. Again, between zero, between negative one and one. Okay. That is one over one plus x squared. Right. It's going to be summation negative one to the n uh, x squared to the n x to the two. integrate the left hand side, what am I going to get? What does anyone notice the antiderivative of one plus one over one plus x squared? Arc, arc you're close arc not, not arc tangent. Arc tangent. Very good. Okay. So you get arc tangent on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, what we're going to get is we integrate each of these guys term by term, negative one to the n, x to the two n plus one over two n plus one. Okay, so just integrate both sides. Just look like we did over there. You're gonna get you're gonna get a power series expression of the arc arc pattern function. So I hope you, I hope you think this is kind of cool. Like it's all it's all everything is coming coming together now. Okay, that's it for today. Sorry, I was a little rushed. Yeah. So I was going to hand back the tests today, but there are a couple of people who uh, looks like are going to take it tomorrow. So we have to hand it back maybe tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, I, I can't hand it back until tomorrow afternoon.